Okay, so let's have a look now at yet another feature. We're going to take a look at automation and automating parameters in machine and also how to control the automation from the hardware and also how to make tweaks in the software in the automation lane editor. So as usual, I have a little demo sequence right here, just a simple pattern with a kick drum and a synth line. So let's check that out and see what we can do to automate the synth line itself. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the trancy lead. That's the name of the sound, the synth sound that we have playing right here. It's actually a patch from Massive. It actually loaded up a copy of Beat Delay right here as part of the instrument package, but we're gonna go and add a filter sound. So let's just add a basic filter. And what we're gonna be interested in is the filter cutoff. So we're gonna sweep this knob as we play and hear what happens. Okay, so that's the effect it has when you change the frequency cutoff value. It sounds like you're opening and closing the sound. We're going to have a look at the hardware controller now and see how we can access this from the hardware. So we're going to go and take a look and we're going to find our parameter to control the frequency cutoff. And we're going to go into our arrange window right here and look for the filter plugin. And here it is. And here is the filter control. And we're going to press and hold the auto button on the controller to put us into automation mode as we adjust our frequency cutoff. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so you can hear the result of our filter automation. You can hear the synth sound opening up as it goes along in the timeline. But for us to actually see the automation, we have to go down here to this bottom triangle. We're going to click this up and that opens up the automation lane. And here we can see the automation line that shows the gradual ascent of that cutoff frequency as we get all the way towards the end of the measure. Now, of course, if you want to do any editing in the automation lane, it's as simple as grabbing a tool like the paintbrush and just start to draw your own curves and change the direction down and go back up maybe, which of course will reflect what will happen with the filter knob and what's going to happen with the overall sound. So what do we have? And there you hear that sudden dip. and then all the way through to the end. Now you can also add automation to additional parameters without even leaving the automation lane window. For example, we can press the plus sign right here. And here we have the option to select by double clicking and choosing parameters from any of the plugins we have loaded up. We have the filter, we have the beat delay, we have massive, for example, we can go into massive and go into the first page of the massive plugin. And here we see, for example, the decay parameter. So we can grab that one. Now, if we click on the massive plugin here and we can update the control area here, we see the decay knob that controls the decay parameter. And down here is a corresponding lane of automation for the decay. So we can actually draw in right now with our paintbrush, some decay automation lines going up just like this. And let's hear what that sounds like. Remember, we have a sudden dip right there. And now we hear it open up all the way, decay and filter cutoff frequency at the same time. Of course, if you're not happy with your results, you can grab the eraser. And if you drag along, you can see it erases your automation points as you go back and forth until you've collapsed it all the way to zero. Okay, so let's have a look again at the filter plugin and the parameters in the control area. We're going to take a look at the difference between the absolute and the relative position of that knob. For example, if you come and mouse slowly over here, you can see an outer ring appears and you can click and drag in this outer ring right here. And let's see what that does.
So as you can see, both the absolute position of the knob and the relative position of the filter cutoff are changing at the same time. Let's take another look at this in detail. Let's actually erase whatever automation that we have for the cutoff frequency knob. So what that means is that whatever position the knob is in, when we start, it's going to stay there and our changes on the outer ring will only be relative to the position of the knob. Okay, so that's the entire knob changing, but let's leave it right there, for example, and record automation with the outer ring. So you can see that the absolute position of the knob actually remains wherever you first set it. And we're just controlling relative changes around that position. It just gives you a deeper level of control. And we're going to show you how we can apply that. For example, when we drop down this arrow and we see the learn buttons here, we can use these buttons to use an external MIDI controller by just clicking and then twisting a knob or a slider. For example, on my MIDI keyboard, you have a limited amount of buttons on your machine controller you can assign externally. And now if you take a look at this automation curve down here, we're going to be able to actually control the absolute position of the knob without affecting the automation which we have recorded, which is all relative. So another way to be able to control a parameter without affecting the automation which you have recorded in your sequence. So this is what I mean by two levels of control. Let's check it out. And as you can see the cutoff control being twisted, the outer ring still maintains its own level of automation independently. And we can get crazy and wiggle it around, especially for live performance use, because the automation you have recorded remains in the clip in your sequence, but you can still make changes on the fly without messing up what you have recorded. Now if you select these other parameters right here, you can see different lanes pop up, and they actually correspond to various automation that is happening in other plugins, for example, the beat delay. And we're going to see how these knobs start moving. And you can see the small changes are taking place according to the automation which is written below. If we switch to another parameter, for example, you can see also the automation lane pops up for that parameter. And we can look at the filter, for example, and we go back down here to our filter automation cutoff. And now that lane is represented and you can see the filter cutoff knob moving. So everybody is moving in sequence. We can edit in real time. We can change the entire ramp of the filter cutoff again as we move through the pattern. And when we're done with that, we can still actually grab our controller and move our cutoff knob again and change the absolute position for a more dramatic effect. And there we have a more smooth sounding sort of filter opening and the decay opening at the same time as we move through the eight bars of that sequence. And that pretty much covers how automation can be used as a great creative tool inside of your productions. Okay, so hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next tutorial.